Hi, we're here today with Pete Connie. Pete Connie was the winner of the Native Rhythms Festival Flute Players Contest. And part of that honor of being the winner of the flute contest for 2019 is he gets to play on stage the following year. So although this year is a little different because of COVID, welcome Pete, we're glad you're here. Thank you, Gail, I'm glad to be here. How were you introduced to the Native American flute and what inspired you to start playing? Well, my wife, Belle, had gone to, we were living in the, Key, in the Keys at the time, and she had gone to North Carolina to participate in a weekend, or, or actually it's three days, of uh, sweat lodges. And it was a bunch of ladies, and they lived in a, in a dorm setting. And each morning, she would wake up to the sound of the Native American flute. One of the ladies was playing the Native American flute. She was captivated by it. And when she got home, she asked me if I might be interested in learning how to play the flute. And I said, sure, why not? So we searched the internet and found one, and I can tell you I don't think that's a good way to buy a flute, but I didn't know that at that time. So um, that's how I ended up with a flute. And I found that because of the nature of the flute, the scale, the way it is, and, and other things, that it's relatively easy to learn. So that's, that's, how, I got, that's how I got started. Huh. Has the Native American flute impacted or changed your life and possibly your health? Well, you know, I don't know about my health, but I, I would imagine that, that it has. Uh, because... Um, it can be calming, it can, and, and uh, you know, stress is not a good thing. Stress, stress kills. And, um, playing the flute sometimes takes me away from day-to-day -day worries and, mm -hmm. and things like that. Um, it's impacted my my life in other ways, like um, having met a lot of neat people, friendly people, and kind people. Um, and, and I enjoy it. I like the sound of the flute. I, I like uh, I like playing it. I really like playing with other people. So yeah, it, it has an impact in my life. Wonderful. Thank and, you. And you know, I stepped out of the box a few times too because of it. I uh, the first thing once we moved to Lake County, mm -hmm. uh, the first thing I did was to find a flute circle, and one of the first things that they started talking about was the. Uh, the competition of Native Rhythms. And I had no intention of getting involved in any such thing. I was, I'm not a competitive person. But I was encouraged to do so, and so the first year I did, and, and each year thereafter until I won. Uh, so I stepped out of the box there, and I stepped out of the box to play in front of uh, uh, a convalescent center on a fairly regular basis until COVID joined us. And, that kind of ended that. Right. Same thing with church. I once in a while was going to church um, in front of people, and until we stopped meeting in the building because of COVID, they still play my music once in a while on, on uh, Zoom, but I'm not in, not in front of people. Right. Yeah, it's impacted my life. Seems to impact a lot of areas of your life. Funny yeah. how flutes do that. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> that's pretty much it. I, I do take it once in a while. Um, well, I, anytime we travel, I take them. Whether I play them then or not, it depends on circumstances. But, um, like we just took a trip to Wisconsin, and uh, I don't play usually while, while on the road. Mm -hmm. uh, because we're in a hotel, I don't really want to um, intrude on other people's uh, peace right. and quiet. So I don't usually play in a hotel. Besides, we're, we're busy trying to get packed up to leave for that day. <laughs> We're resting from the end, you know, at the end of the day. Uh, but sometimes when I get where we're going, then, then I might. Okay. Wonderful. Who in the Native American flute world do you look up to? There are many people whose playing I envy. Uh, uh, I, don't, I don't know that, that I actually, you know, I don't know how much I look up to them. I, People who I look up to uh, primarily are people I've met in the food circle. Um, people that have inspired me. And I, I'm thinking like uh, the, the people who were part of the group 
group when I first joined, and, and one is not with us anymore. That was our leader, Dave. Mm -hmm. uh, and you know, he was the type that would make you feel like you're you're, you're the best thing in the world that's come, come along. And, and, you know, I felt special for a while, and and, and he was always a very nice man. Yes, he is. And you know, Kim is such a fantastic player, and, and Deb and Pam. Uh, they all, uh, and, and they all make me feel like I'm, you know, one of them. So right. That, I know the feeling. Really. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So what would you recommend to a person who would like to start on a Native American food? I, I think, well, I would, I would advise, if they're in a situation where they can do so, uh, like at, with, with a, a food maker who has some sell at the time, trying several different teas and seeing what, what appeals to the ear. But, you know, most of us really like the low flutes, mm -hmm. and the lower the, the key, the harder it is to, to make your, your hands fine, be able to stretch between the holes. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people won't be able to do it, but I have a, I have, well, this is, this is the lowest one that I have, and it's a D, D minor. And I have trouble, I have a lot of trouble reaching that bottom hole um, with that, you know, accurately. Right. I can sort of get it, but I often miss it. Um, so I, I think, you know, one of the one of the most common keys would be an, an A minor. Mm -hmm. An A. It, it's relatively easy to reach. Well, it is easy to reach. Right. Of it. And, but to me, I, it, that's, that's a higher pitch style I like. Especially when I'm playing. Somebody else is playing, it seems okay. But when I'm playing, I just don't like it. So, uh, I really, I, I prefer an E or possibly an F. I think I, my first flute was a G. <laughs> and, and I have a couple of Gs, and at first, at first I didn't like them. I mean, when I first started playing flute, I was not, I was not impressed by the G. Um, but I have I have two and one was made by a friend of mine, so I I, I really like it. Mm -hmm. and, uh, another well, they're both made by a friend by a friend. But, but, uh, one is this one, and this was made by Roy Wood, and so was this one. Um, this one is special to me because it, it was made out of a limb from my. Camper tree, camper tree in my front yard. Oh, wow. So, um, and, and when he sent it to me when he was finished, and when I opened it and played it, I thought, oh, that's really good. That's a good sign. <laughs> so, I, I've grown to like the G. Yay! Still, still prefer the E to the F. I've grown to like the G. Do you have to be able to read music and know the kind of time I scale to learn how to play the flute? No. Um, I was trained to read, to read music when I was a kid. I played, I, I took piano lessons for a number of years. Mm -hmm. And I played in the played the cornet in the junior high and high school band. Uh, so I was able to, I've kind of forgotten by now, but I was able to. Right. Yeah. Um, and, and I think I did develop somewhat of a musical sense, of like what, what, what kind of sound should come after another and that sort of thing. But, um, Many people who play the Native American flute have never been able to read music, and and mostly if you if you try, uh, mostly Native American music is not presented in that format anyway. It's presented with pictures showing what holes are covered <laughs> for a given note. Um, so no, you don't need to be. In fact, when I first started playing the flute, the only thing I did without any guidance was just kind of experiment, you know, going up and down the scale because the notes aren't, are not evenly spaced. You get a sound that sounds like a song and then you want to experiment a little bit by going, you know, skipping a note and mm -hmm. um, possibly the worst thing I, that happened to me was finding a need to learn a song because then I got kind of occupied with actually learning a song instead of just playing for my heart. 
Ah. <laughs> yeah. Well, Pete, thank you so much for spending time with us and sharing part of your story. I really appreciate that. Well, it's my pleasure, and, and I hope you enjoy the, the festival, and I know that I will. Yes. And I hope we enjoy it in person next year. Yes, looking forward to that. Yes. yes. Thank you, Gail. You're welcome. Thank you.